What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Random Encounter Podcast, Episode 6. I'm your host, James, and I'm joined by Jesse. What up, guys? And Mike. What up, boy? <laughs> I keep laughing now. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We're going to keep this in here. We're going to keep this here. We got an awesome show for you guys today, but we're going to talk about what's up with Xbox this year, because me personally, I think Xbox has been a no-show this year. Uh, you know, that's my personal take on that. We also got some weird news about PlayStation doing some certain things like raising the price and then Nintendo and Denuvo, are they doing a partnership or not? So there's a bunch of stuff for us to cover. But first, I want to give a shout out to all our subscribers, all 75 subscribers out there. I really appreciate your support. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but every time I see a subscriber, I, I get really excited. I get really hyped. You know, I get really appreciated as well. Because we do put a lot of work in this podcast. Yeah. You know, we try to make this as entertaining as possible um, and as informative as possible, right? Because, in my opinion, podcasts are also here to be informative, you know, where we can tell you the news because, hey, you know, it, it gets crazy out there, right? So we would like to be that news that you settle down and listen to while you're doing something in the background. I uh, also like to tell you that we do have our Patreon. We have that had that up for quite some time. Go ahead and please check that out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We also have a Streamlabs donation page, so anything that you do for us will also support us to get better equipment, better cameras, uh, better streaming equipment. We also did start our live streaming last Friday. We had a good, awesome turnout where I think our peak timing was, or our peak views were at 11 views, which, hey, I'm excited for that. I'm not sure about you guys. Are you excited this week to to stream? Yeah, dude. It's totally. Yeah. Yeah, so, not for sure, man. We'll definitely be streaming. We're looking to do Tuesday through Friday. Where we each will take our, our own time, our own turn streaming by ourselves. And then, of course, we'll have a group stream together on Tuesday uh, where we'll just, it'll be us three, and we might have a special guest who comes out every now and then to, you know, partner with us, squad up with us, depending on what games we're playing. Uh, but moving on to gaming news, what's up with PlayStation? They go ahead and they increase the price worldwide, except for the US. What do you guys think is going on with that? I think um, it's the lack of um, the chip shortage is still happening. Um, they haven't pushed enough unit out. Um, I feel like we're going to be next. Um, it's in due time. But like the thing is, it's like they increase the price, but there's no product to push. Um, well, I that think was it's an the, economy thing, too. Like inflation yeah, exactly. so high right now. Like, yeah. I think that's like the the majority of it. Everything's expensive, you know. Like yeah. If, you know, rent in in our areas like literally like skyrocketing. You know, food skyrocketing. Yeah. And I think they're just doing it to kind of like cover their own butt. You know what I mean? See. Yeah. I I would like I I agree with those takes with the economy and the whole situation where everything is now. But Xbox and Nintendo already responded with saying they're not going to increase the prices on their units. So it, it now makes Sony look like the bad guy right there, right? That they're, they're increasing the yeah. price in cer- certain areas. I think it's like 100 bucks more um, when you do the conversion rate. And that, that's quite a lot for a unit, right? You know, you're looking at base model um, or digital rather is 400. The disc version is 500. Imagine those being now 500 and 600. We're at PS3 pricing territory and that's just like, like I if I didn't have a PS5 and you told me, hey, this is now a six hundred dollar unit, I probably would pass because for six hundred bucks, you can probably start building your own, you know, gaming PC, right? Or you can go yeah. with a competition yeah. with Xbox that has a five hundred dollar unit and call it a day, right? So it it's definitely a weird case. Like I, it's all valid, but yeah. it's you. You also got to think about. How the switch has been out for five years. Yeah, they already they're already true. turning a profit on it. So everything that they're selling now is pretty much at a at a profit. Yeah. Um Microsoft Sony's a big company, right? Microsoft is way bigger than Sony. Yeah, that is you know true. what I mean? Like yeah. so they can afford to be like, you know what? We're not gonna raise prices, so Sony looks like the bad guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like and yeah. they can do it as a marketing kind of thing. Yeah, that's true. So when you think about it, like um, Sony's also dumping a lot of money into media right now. Yeah, yeah. So they probably it's just there's like, like so uh, much. Yeah, they got a lot going on. Yeah, and um, 
I think it's just like they're they're doing it. I think they didn't have to do it. You know, like I think they're being greedy by doing it, but I think they're doing it more to uh, fund their other interests. Yeah, you know what I mean. Exactly. Well, yeah, and but I- like the thing is, it's like it's so weird for them to do it. No, I could see if the product was easily available. That would be one thing with like the economy and everything going crazy at the moment. But like you can't walk into any store right now and find a PS5. Yeah. And it's even worse for the regions that got that price increase. Like you're not walking into a store at any time to pick up a PS5. You can't find them anywhere. Well, they're only they, online retail drops. It, it's it puts a bad taste in a lot of consumers' mouths because yeah. like they get the news, hey, look, it's like fifty to a hundred dollars more in some regions. And you can't get the thing like so why would I do that when I know like I could luckily walk into sometimes a store and oh look there's a series S or series X sitting there. So like that's going to like I said just push a lot of consumers away from Sony this generation and either go to PC or go straight to the competitor. Well it's also you got to think what consoles uh, people buy what their friends have. Yeah. Yeah. So if all your boys already got a PS5, you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to get an Xbox because then, like, especially if you play multiplayer games, like, who are you going to play with? But I mean, yeah, like, exactly. with, with that argument, though, like, a lot of uh, games are now cross play, right? Like, if you want to play Fortnite, yeah, the voice you can play with terrible. anybody. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But hook up, where, right? Put a Bluetooth headset on use discord and then you can Man, it's, 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 <laughs> oh you know, well, hold up it, before it we get cool. into that though um actually uh di- sony did announce they're gonna have discord integration and then xbox is already beta testing discord integration if you're an xbox See, insider happens, you can do it that won't matter. yeah so like yeah, that that kind of eliminates that um in that sense well, but, but but as of now it's so i played destiny before it was cross play yeah and and everything oh i mean uh so it's like when you're tr- when you're playing with boys who are on playing on the Xbox console and you're on PC. Yeah. You know when you're playing Xbox, it's it's a pain to like have to have a headphone for your Discord and then yeah. a headphone for the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They can hear what's going on yeah. and then like so you know what I mean? It, it is doable, but it's like because I've done it, but it's like uh, it's not the most um, it, you know like convenient thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I mean, yeah, that that's like I said, that's gonna change soon because they already announced Hopefully, that integration. I'm sure Xbox, like right now, if you're an Xbox Insider, you can already do the Discord uh, beta testing, so you can already sign up for that. Uh, and then Sony, I don't, I think they gave a time frame. I don't remember because I read the article and I, I completely forgot about that. Um, but yeah, and then also a hot take. I think even though they didn't officially announce that they raised the price in the U.S., I think they did because the only model that's been available for ps5s is the horizon zero dawn model that's 50 bucks more so to technically to get a ps5 yeah you do get a game yeah. right so it kind of softens the blow there but let's say if you're like me i i probably won't play horizon horizon forbidden west i just wasn't a fan of uh zero dawn and if i really wanted a ps5 i probably wouldn't just get that unit because i'm like i'm, I'm not gonna play that game right so i mean i guess i guess we'll have to see what the future holds you know if yeah more sales will I go mean, through or not yeah it's it's definitely an anti-consumer move, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, but it's just I feel like in this economy, it's like kind of justifiable. Yeah, you know. But like, once inflation equals out, the que- my question is, are they going to bring the price down? You know yeah. what I mean? Like back down, yeah. or are they just going to like keep it the same? Yeah, because then you can really tell if they're just doing it to be greedy or if they're doing it to kind of like stay afloat. You know? So, yeah. Hmm. Guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, what do you guys? What so? Sony also that the other thing with Sony is they've had a pretty quiet year this year, right? They've had as far as exclusives go, you had Stray. Um, what else came out this year from Sony? I'm trying to think. So uh, Last of Us Remaster just came out. Okay, yeah, um, so you have Last of Us Remaster. There's uh, God of War. That was this year? Oh yeah, that's right. Elder yeah, Ring was this year too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they haven't really had a. They haven't yeah. really had like a quiet year. They've been pretty doing pretty all right. You're right. Yeah. So, I mean, so they've had compared to Xbox. You yeah. Know, like, Which especially we'll... <laughs> they got got a war coming out um in the fall. Yes, yeah, so you're so you're right. So it's been a, a mixed year. So like yeah. yeah. What what else what else do they have to offer though? Because you were looking at 
Horizon Zero Dawn was February, right? No, January. Uh, it came out the same day as Elden Ring, so I think it was February. So okay, February. Yeah, it was like two days after, yeah. or no, two days before Elden Ring. Okay. So it was like yeah. February. So February was Zero Dawn, and then the next exclusive was Stray, which was what was that? August, right? August, yeah, but you so, said just came out. So you had a quiet time between then, and then yeah, we have The Last of Us Remastered that just got um, released. Re-released? Or, I don't even know. Like, yeah. Or Last of Us Part 1, it. that's the, the official name of it. And then we have God of War coming out, and then that's it. So four games this year. Yeah, it's been, oh, I mean, average. yeah, you're right. That's about average there. So, yeah, but do they have anything else coming up this year that's exclusives? God of War? I don't yeah, God aside, war, aside from I God of War, think, right? I think that's uh, about it. Before Spoken, does that come on October? No, that got delayed till next no, year. No, that got delayed. From what I'm seeing here, no, not, not necessarily. Yeah, um, so I guess, well, I guess, yeah, we do have, no, those aren't exclusive. So I was going to say Star Ocean, but that is coming to Xbox as well. So yeah, as far as like exclusive go, yeah, there's only really God of War to look forward to. I mean, I guess, yeah, it is better than the competition, right, than Xbox. Xbox has... I don't even know if they have anything this year. I'm trying to think about it. Nothing. Like, I, I don't think. I can't even think. fix Halo, bro. I don't even like <laughs> but, <laughs> but apparently Xbox said they're going to have a big presence in Tokyo Game Show this year. Yeah. So we yeah. don't know what that entitles because they didn't really go into detail. Yeah. Um, they just remember? said, hey, like, look out. There's going to be some big news this year. Do you remember that year where they like dropped like a bunch of like trailers for games and like there's still like no games out? Yeah. You, know, oh, yeah. you, you like, remember when they bought all the gaming developers too? And have you seen a title from any of those developers yet? <laughs> well, we'll and, we'll like, be talking about Xbox later on, so let's not jump <laughs> ahead of ourselves. But yeah, let's yeah, move yeah, on yeah, to the next to. subject. Nintendo plus Denuvo. So Denuvo announced that, uh, and for those of you who don't know, Denuvo is basically a, um, a uh, what do you call it? I forgot my train of thought. Anti-cheat software. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So it makes it harder for you to pirate the games. Uh, it's already officially available like in PCs. And the issue with Denuvo is that they it tends to break games, right? So when Resident Evil Village came out, there was an issue where the game was running really bad. Like it looked better and played better on series x versus if you had like a 3070 in your pc but the minute the nouveau got removed it fixed everything like you know ray tracing got better uh you know performance overall was just better they announced that they're now uh you're able to use their technology for switch games to combat piracy now nintendo did already officially announce that they're in no way shape or form partner with that they have no involvement into what they're doing there but it's raising a lot of questions on if developers do put this technology inside switch games are they going to break it are they going to have even worse performance than what they already are what do do you guys think man it's nintendo fans are like the weirdest kind of people to me man because it's like nintendo has the most (laughs) anti-consumer policies but no one ever says anything about it but if ea does something god forbid you know what i mean like everyone jumps on them mm-hmm. and it's like nintendo isn't any better than ea they yeah. suck at game preservation yeah you know what i mean like they're they implement stuff like this all the time and like no one says anything and drm is the most anti-consumer thing yeah. you can do because you're yeah. more worried about not making money than everyone having a solid experience playing a game yeah you know, and honestly, like, if you're so, like, people are going to steal your games whether you have, like, DRM or you don't. You know what I mean? Like, so I feel like you're breaking a game for literally no result. Well, and right. I even remember with, like, on my end with uh, Denuvo was when I bought uh, Devil May Cry 5 for Steam. It yeah. dropped the frames from 60 frames to 20 frames, and... They even, like the modding community, made a mod to remove it just so that you could actually play the game as a solid 60. I have like, so much. Like, it's, it, it's, and, it's crazy. And the thing about it is, if it's going on Nintendo, like, you see frame rates on most Switch games not going past 30. Some may hit 60, depending on game. But, like, if this gets on a lot of titles... Who knows if it's going to crash the game, frame rate drops, performance drops. Like, 
in my opinion, I love and hate Nintendo at the same time as of late. Yeah. Because like something like this, like, like I could understand the piracy and all that. Like I could understand that's being rapid, but like, listen to what the people want. Like they want GameCube games. They want mm-hmm. Game Boy Advance games. They want Game Boy Color games. Like, and they did it right on the Wii U, but like on the Switch, it's like I don't know why. It's like on the Switch, it's just sporadic games that nobody really cares about on switch online like i mean you know what i mean hot take when it comes to nintendo is they were great in the wii even wii u era uh and i think that was more because of because of iwata right remember iwata was the man he was a gamer himself while also a developer and then of course he was ceo of a company and i think he did a lot most of that was probably his effort of saying, hey, you know, we have a library, right? Why don't we create virtual console? They have virtual console on Wii, you know, and then they brought it over to the Wii U. I think, you know, just the Nintendo today, unfortunately, they're not looking at direction. They're just trying to see, like, how no. can we, you know, make everybody poor, right? Like, you know, that's where it is. Yeah. Oh, man. They're not the same company that, yeah. that they were, and everyone has, like, this rose-tinted glasses. Yeah. Them. Like, they're so, they're so anti-piracy, man. But, yeah. like, do you remember when... Um, streaming services first came out and everyone was happy and piracy was at an all-time low because you gave everyone a a cheap way to watch media yeah but then when they started implementing a million streaming services you know what happened piracy Piracy went went right back up yep you know what i mean like so it's the same thing like if you're gonna not let me play you know uh I don't know, like an older game you know like if you're not gonna let me play you know twilight princess on my you know new console then i'm gonna find a way to play it without your help you know what i mean yeah and like like i was saying it's just like you see that like everybody data mines the firmware updates and stuff like that on the switch you see that they're testing like game boy advance games game boy color games there's been some gamecube games Mm -hmm. like they don't announce or say hey look this is what we're doing to try to like listen to you guys because like I said, like when the Switch Online first came out, everything was awesome. Like you got a good amount of games like at the start, but like we're getting two to three games that nobody wants every two to four months. Like it's not consistent at all. Like and even this, like I said, like with De Novo, like a lot of developers are going to use it because they're going to decide, hey, look, it's our way to not get piracy. It's our way to save money. I just feel like in the long run, it's going to hurt, hurt the Switch more than save the Switch. Yeah, Any I kind mean, of DR- yeah, I guess it's going to be interesting to see if actual developers are going to use the de novo stuff. I mean, if they're using it on PC, you would assume that they're probably going to use it on the Switch yeah. as well. But like Mike said, you know, unfortunately, like you can't really combat piracy because people will find a way. They'll always find a way. And it's just, I think trying to lock down games like that and putting that stuff in to kill video game preservation, it's it's bad, right? They tried it with DVDs. People found out ways around DVDs, right? They were able to rip DVDs and you shouldn't, shouldn't do that. It's, I think we need to be able to remove games from that for, like you said, video game preservation. Imagine if people weren't able to get these SNES yeah. games, they're gone, right? There would be no yeah. way to play these SNES because a lot of people don't own an SNES anymore. You know, they, and it's it, super expensive, man. Those yeah. games and the SNES, man, you you need to be like exactly there to buy all that, dude. And, like, and yeah, yeah exactly. it's one of those things too. Yeah, it's like why have to buy you know pay three hundred dollars for Path of Radiance, right? You know, it's a GameCube right. game. Uh, if you don't yeah, give any, ago, yeah, either start reselling that that game. Right, or put it on a different platform. But I mean, anyways, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens with Denuvo. Hopefully, developers don't use it because the Switch already has issues trying to keep up with modern games. And uh, last thing I yeah. need is for it to be even worse. Um, yeah, moving on. Another bit of news that was there. It was a scary rumor, and I say scary because uh, I wouldn't have liked if this went down. Um, I remember it was reported by USA Today that Amazon was going to buy EA. And I remember the minute I saw that tagline, I was like, no, I hope this is not true. Uh, and then, of course, <laughs> later on, CNBC reported that this, those rumors were false. 
uh, they were not going to do anything. And of course, you know, Amazon hasn't announced that at all. And then USA Today went and backtracked and wrote that their sources were wrong. They, they weren't, you know, the whoever wrote the article, they weren't following policies and stuff like that. Um, what would you guys have done if Amazon bought EA? Um, I don't want to EA. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can't, I'm trying to think of like the EA games I play and I'm like, I don't yeah, think that would like, have me. That, that is so, true. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess for me, it's like, more like I'm tired of studios being bought out, right? Like, you know, it's just like, I, I get why Microsoft did it. They're trying to build studios or rather it was a cheaper way for them to build a studio. I, right. Um, and that's correct. why people do it. Cause exactly. it's cheaper. It's but, cheaper. But I just think so like, for me, like, like, like my Microsoft now, they might own Activision Blizzard if the deal officially goes through and that kind of, you know, they said that, you know, most of the higher games like Call of Duty, for example, are going to be multi-platform, and even though I'm not a big Call of Duty fan. I just don't feel like, like, why buy that? Like, you know, you have, like, stuff like uh, Diablo, Overwatch, and things like that. Imagine that if it was only available on Xbox and PC, of course. Like, how, how would you feel about that? Like, that, to me, that makes no sense. You're eliminating more competition, which, you know, going back to what we've said previous times on our different podcasts and even our stream, once you eliminate the competition, things get stale. If there's nobody to yeah. combat you, why? And I think these companies buying other companies just doesn't make sense. Not only that, like Amazon's going deep into cloud gaming. And I feel like if they were to buy somebody, let's say EA, they might make their games exclusive to the cloud. And I wouldn't want that. So, I, yeah. So in this day and, and I'm just a disclaimer is like, I'm not a f- fanboy for anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I just choose a side. Like I choose my side, you know what I mean? For everything. Yeah. So I think, in the Microsoft case, I think them buying Blizzard is good because of all the nonsense that was going on at Blizzard. Yeah. You know, Activision or whatever. Um, and I think nowadays it's not a console thing. It's a software thing. Yeah. So oh, people course. don't, I don't think really people, they. I don't think like these big companies care about console exclusives anymore. I think it's about you using their service for that game. Yeah. So yeah. like, for example, like Microsoft's trying to do that by via game pass you yeah. know what i mean sony's trying to do that via their like um i don't even know what it's called the like playstation essentials yeah. or whatever where they have the three tier thing yeah. you know um and if ea were to do it i i don't think they would make anything exclusive yeah um because you got to think they get my they get a cut of that regardless of what console it's on yeah you, you know so they would lose money by not making it well, remember, it, it was it would be Amazon, right, buying yeah. that. And, of course, they would lose money, but exclusives is still the one thing that, that gets you to that platform, right? So, for example, like Microsoft. I it's dying. I, I don't I, think so. I feel like it is. Because when you look at it, when you look at it, yeah, PlayStation is putting their games on Steam for now, right? You know, and Microsoft, yeah, they put some of their games on Steam as well. But the exclusive cut is still a big deal, right? Because... Let's say if Xbox had, um, let's say Horizon Zero Dawn, right? You know, or Horizon Forbidden Forbidden West. I don't think they would sell, or Sony would not sell as much as they do now. Exclusives still drive you to that platform, and when you're still trying to make money in that sense, you still need those exclusives to bring you back well, to that platform. Because, I think, for example, well, if I have these, like, high, well, hear me out. Well, so if like, I have think these about games. This, though. Mm-hmm, like, Think about have- this. You had MLB The Show, which was a Sony exclusive. Yeah. Guess what? It's not exclusive anymore. But that was because like, ML- MLB uh, made Sony make it multi-platform. Yeah. But, it wasn't a Sony yeah, but decision. You, you know, <laughs> but you know what I mean? You know yeah. how many years MLB The Show was just a PlayStation exclusive? Correct. And how and many like, people bought a PlayStation because of that? Yeah. You see? I mean, so, but, but, but like, hold on. Hold on. Hold on real yeah. quick. Every every company sells hardware at a loss. Correct. So so if it doesn't really do anything for you to buy a console, the only reason back in the day that you had to buy the console is to buy their services. Correct. But now exactly. if, if people make their services available on other things and they can just sell the game on there, it's easier for them. So, so, oh, exa- yep. so I will example. But you're missing one part though of that, right? So let's let me let me go back to my original thought, right? So you go ahead, uh, Horizon Forbidden West is on both, right? If I'm an Xbox user, I get the game, 
let's let's say all right i'm this is hypothetical right yeah, so i'm yeah. an xbox user i get horizon for forbidden west microsoft gets the 30 percent cut sony gets the 70 percent right i now i have the xbox platform i buy um let's say i buy uh, scarlet nexus which is not a sony game right microsoft's still getting 30 percent, but now sony's getting zero because it's not a sony game on the contrary or on the other hand right if on playstation i have forbidden west an exclusive i buy a ps5 i buy uh horizon forbidden west i get 100 percent of those profits now i go to buy scarlet nexus now i have 30 percent of those profits you see where i'm getting at so a lot of people forget that they're doing that to entice you to go to their console right because then when you buy the yeah. games on their platform they're making more money versus if you do multi-platform you're losing out on money there right you're losing so out on, on that stuff yeah. microsoft has a little bit of a is. correct microsoft is a little bit different because they can put their games on pc and they can still they still have game pass on pc right so if you buy game pass regardless you can play on an xbox or pc it's still a microsoft platform sony as of right now they're relying on steam i do believe that in the future and we've kind of seen it in the spider-man code there will be a sony launcher so they can make up that money that they're missing. Uh, and, and that's where I think exclusives are still there and people still need exclusives because of those reasons. You know, it's, it's kind of like that in every platform. You need it, these exclusive features to sell because then what's the point of having your product when the next product has it as well, right? Yeah. Does it's, that make sense? It, at that point, mm-hmm. it's, um, it's just kind of like features, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it becomes on like what everyone you know is using, you know, like because uh, it's, Game, they're starting to put Game Pass on TVs. Yeah. So yep. if so if they if Sony does a does a, like a, something like Game Pass and puts it on Sony TVs. Yeah. Then some people will just use that one because it's already on there. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. Like exclusives, I think it's like kind of like a fading out because there's yeah. so many more ways to make money with games nowadays than there was back in the day. Well, know? I mean, with like yeah. third party exclusives, I can see that, but first party, not so much, right? Cause that's still their software. Those are those exclusive features that I think they will still get people to come back. Right. Um, I, Microsoft will never put halo on PS five, for example. Right. And Sony will never put the last of us on Xbox because they don't want people to lose interest in the Sony platform. If it gets to that point, then it's like, well, why do I need that? You already have talks now. People are thinking, why do I need an Xbox? Why do I need a PS5 when I can get a PC and play both of those games combined? Right? So I, I think, I mean, mm-hmm. it's one of those things we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I think it's going to revert to yeah. mainly PC. Because, uh, I, I, like, with Xbox, yeah, they switched to more of, like, a console to, like, a software kind of thing. Yeah. You know, they was, they're yeah. pretty much, the Xbox brand went from being just a console to now it's more of a software yeah uh kind of thing so i think like honestly like for future i don't even know if like microsoft will release another console yeah because if they have pc yeah. and game pass and stuff like it's so much money to manufacture consoles yeah you know so i think they still it, will because for the series x and for the specs that it has it's a pretty nice uh deal right 500 bucks like you try to find a 500 dollar laptop <laughs> Steam Deck. It's not going to be nowhere. Well, yeah, there's Steam Deck no. too, but a Series X. Yeah, Steam Deck. Series yeah. X is still way more powerful than the Steam Deck. So, I it, mean, it I, I, I'll still, I'll still see them doing that, but I guess we'll wait and see. Um, I had a retraining thought. I was like, how do we get into this conversation again? But yeah, because we're talking about Amazon <laughs> and EA. <laughs> you know, yeah. I was like, what, what are we doing? Yeah. So before we get into our main topic, which is about Xbox, because we've actually been talking a lot about Xbox. Um, what games have you guys been playing? Let's start with you, Mike. Uh, me, I just started playing Fallout 3 on the Steam Deck because yeah. I haven't played that game in like over a decade, I want to say. Nice. And um, other than that, like I just, I've been on Destiny again because yeah. uh, Lightfall looks uh, promising <laughs> and I heard Witch, Witch Queen was pretty good. So De- Destiny on the Steam Deck, right? Uh, one day. I'm just then, kidding. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> once that happens, bro, I don't even know if I'll be on this podcast anymore, bro. Like, I'll be MIA. You'll man. be with like, the Steam Deck right in front of you playing. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But, what about, what so, else? Anything else? No. Uh, no, nah, nah, I'm still trying to. I, I took a break from Horizon Forbidden West, funny enough, because it was too, uh, <laughs> too open world ish. Man, I, I'm getting so tired of these. <laughs> like, so Fallout 3 is open world, but it's more like you role play in your head. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. But, like, but it's a smaller world, right? It's not yeah, like it's a. Smaller. Yeah. 
it's just like I, I get so sick. Like it always seems fun in concept, and then I start playing, and then I'm like, <laughs> like twenty hours in, I'm like, yo, this is boring. So. Yeah. <laughs> what, what about you, Jesse? So it's been a few weeks since we talked about it. So I finished uh, Attack of the Sands. Um, that was actually a great twenty-hour RPG. I would highly recommend playing it. Um, if you had a DS or anything like that, I did finish Pokemon Sun. I suffered through. Um, finished. I don't know. With that generation of Pokemon, it was kind of handheldy. It just oh, go from point A to point B in cutscenes. Yeah, and that kind of drawled it out way too much on that end. So. I don't think I'm going to go back and play Ultra Sun or Moon on that one. Um, Mike got me into Destiny, so I've been playing Destiny 2. Um, I bought that when it was on sale last week, I believe it was, when uh, they announced a whole bunch of stuff on Destiny coming. Like, there's a pass for Fall Guys for Destiny. Uh, Fortnite got their skins for Destiny, so I kind of got hooked on that. Um, other than that, I picked up Dot Hack, the original trilogy. I'm going through Infection right now, so part one. Um, about five hours in, so I'm not super far into it. And I wish that game gets remastered. I mean, it would be perfect with GU since GU's out. Um, I hope they would do it, but there's no guarantee. Um, James, how about you? Um, I don't play games. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, actually, it's been really quiet for me because I've been, you know, editing the podcast and you know some work and other stuff, uh, and doing my solo video. Right, I've been a lot of my time has been doing that. Um, I did play. I've actually been playing a little bit from here and there of uh, Radiant Dawn. You know, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. I I still well, yeah. love that game. Um, I've been playing also Fortnite with my kids, so whenever I'm available, I play that with them. And, you know, I've had fun, you know, just doing Kamehameha's and things like that. And what else? There's something else. Oh, Metal Gear Solid V. Uh, still playing that. And like I said in a few podcasts ago, I'm still hoping to finish it. But, I mean, it's not looking that way again because <laughs> of how busy I am. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue. But, yeah, I really haven't. I really haven't been playing much because yeah, I think I'm you got it. diving into this and trying to, you know, get this as good as possible and as, you know, as perfect as possible, right? As perfect as it can get. Um as Yeah. Uh but yeah, not 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 so much. I I hope ne- hopefully, I mean, when us doing streaming is going to help out a lot for my game time and then of course every now and then once we actually get things more settled, I'll be I'll be able to have more game time for sure. I'm looking to yeah. either restart Demon Souls or, you know, play uh, something else. Yeah. Do Elden Ring, bro. I'll do Elden, game Elden Ring. Yeah, I mean, I have that on Series X, and it's one of those things, again, I haven't played in a, in a minute. But, I mean, we'll probably save that for a uh, a stream, a group stream, where you guys can carry me on the PS5 version. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and do it that way because I'll have to start from scratch. <laughs> yeah, That's man. fine. I'm gonna do like a unga boonga build, bro. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a fun run through to to re go through it because I I didn't get too far in Elden Ring. I got hmm, trying to remember. I was going to the is it the monastery or something like that. Like, um, you did? Did you make it to the mountaintop of giants? No, I didn't go there oh, yet. Man. Oh yeah, man! I was like, I, yeah, I beat man. the main like the first area, and then I was going to like I was in the swampy area, and then I was going to the monastery. I think that's what it is—a monastery oh, okay. where all the magic yeah. people are. Oh, uh, the academy! Oh, yeah, the academy! There yeah. we go. That's where I was heading to, and then I haven't played since then. Uh, I don't remember why I stopped. Um, can't remember, but I it stopped. Did. Yeah, it gets it gets even better from there, man. Like, I know. Go yeah, back. it starts <laughs> to go great after that. I know. Well, if you know, I I was actually waiting for a sale for the Steam Deck because I was planning to play it on there, and I know for sure I'll be able to finish it on the Steam Deck. But eh, get it on we'll PC, see. bro. I play it on. Yeah, oh, that's what you have it on. Okay, what about what about you? You have it on PS Five, right, Jesse? Uh, I have this thing called a credit card, so. Um, <laughs> 
So I yeah, think I, I could do. <laughs> I could hey, do it on so like, anything. Yeah, I was say though, so then I'll rather get it on PC. Then we can just play it that way. Yeah, that's yeah, easy. Because then I can play it on my Steam Deck when whenever. All right, I guess that's that's what, that's gonna be our next stream. <laughs> there we go. Elden Ring. Sure. Yeah, there we go. But yeah, moving on to our main topic about Xbox, right? Even though we were talking about Xbox earlier, Xbox has had a really quiet year. Like I'm trying to think about it right now like i don't think they there, was, there hasn't been not one exclusive that came out this year correct me how if i'm wrong years, though, like how many years how many years has it been since they've dropped any like good game like yeah like, and yeah it's like they bought all these studios years ago i want to say what three years ago probably two i think it's, it's I think been a it while two or three and we've seen nothing no fruits of their labor right like there's nothing so i have a list here of what's coming next year but there's still a bunch of games that are not even mentioned, right? Wait, so, is, is Starfield still coming out this year or no? No, it's next no. year. So the, next year. So the list yeah. is Starfield coming 2023, Redfall coming 2023. Both of those two games were supposed to come out this year, and they got right. delayed till next year. Okay. You have Minecraft Legends, uh, which is like a strategy type game, um, next year. And then there's still a bunch of games that are not even they don't have a release date. You had Avowed, which was that game by Obsidian that they showed off that, that looked, looked like oh, Elder man. Scrolls. That no no release date. Mm-hmm. And then uh was it is it Hellblade? I think Hellblade. Right? Yeah. 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 That that has no release date either. And then there's a bunch of that of other ones I didn't mention, but Contraband, right? I don't know if you remember seeing that, but that was announced two years ago. That uh, game sounds familiar. All it was was a cinematic, not even a cinematic trailer. It was just a trailer with the studio's name, which is the people who made uh, Just Cause. Um, oh, okay. And then it just says Contraband, and then that's it. <laughs> and then you oh. have uh, an Indiana Jones game that they announce. Nowhere to be found, right? Um, what else? I think that's it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. You, oh, there was a... No, they're not doing? What is it? They're not... They're not. They're not fixing Halo. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, like, I know. Like, the only game that they've dropped that's noteworthy in years, and they're still not fixing it. Well, and and that's not the only game. Uh, Rare was uh, working on a game that cell shader game. I forgot the name of it. Um, but again, no release date, oh, yeah. and this is stuff that they showed. I think two years in a row, and then this year was just absent. It, it's it's weird. Like, so my biggest pet peeve is when things get announced way too early. Like yeah. going back to like the yeah. Nintendo talk. As much as there's certain like anti-consumer practices and things like that that Nintendo do uh, sometimes, um, I do like their Nintendo Directs because usually their Directs are like, here's what's coming out now in the next few months, with the exception of like Bayonetta 3 right being announced way too early and Metroid Prime 4 being announced way too early. Way um, too early. And I guess Breath of, the Wild, Breath of the Wild sequel also. But for the most part, right, like, you know, there's a rumor for a Nintendo Direct in September. I'm excited for it because... More than likely, they're going to announce games that are coming out either that same month, October, November, December, right? We're going to get other new games coming out this year where if Sony does a state of play, right, or even Microsoft, I'm not that excited because I'm like, okay, what cinematic trailer I'm getting now? Like Redfall, when it was introduced, it was just a cinematic trailer. You didn't then, show the type of gameplay. And exactly. Like, the, Everybody no, was no. guessing. We had to wait till this year to find out what type of game it was. Which it, looks okay. Yeah, it, it looks all right. Um, like Borderlandsy, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, but Probably it's not like day one for me. But I mean, it's Game Pass, so <laughs> it's Game Pass. Yeah. Well, that changed my mind. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's Game Pass, right? So you know that that's gonna be a day one re- regardless. I mean, I might try it out day one. Maybe we can do a stream together, right? Day one. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's it's weird that they have all these studios now and and no games, right? And the issue with Xbox, especially in the Xbox One era, was always. There's no games. And no games meaning there's no exclusives to look forward to. Now, it's the same thing. We go back here. Microsoft hasn't really, this whole year, again, correct correct me if I'm wrong. Leave a comment in the, in, down in the video. But I believe there were no games, no exclusive games that came out this year on Xbox. Hello. I think you're right. No, Halo was last year. No. Yeah, well, Halo oh, was, was last December. year. Oh, you're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Halo was, was last December. year. Because right. what, the campaign just came out. That came out in December. December. It was it was at the end of it, like the year. That's why. Yeah. It? yeah, it was at December. Yeah, the campaign of. Why do I have a December. feeling? Why do I have a feeling it came out like this year? Nope. Yeah, I felt the same <laughs> way. Yeah. No, oh, it yeah, came out it, in December. 
So well, I think I think part of the problem is is um, the old head of Xbox. I forgot his name. Um, oh, Patrick. Um, yeah, yeah, that guy. Yeah, uh, he messed he messed up a lot of stuff, and Phil Spencer pretty much had to come in, clean up his mess, and get something going. Yeah. So I think we're right now within the next few years we're getting to the him doing something you know what i mean because i think he spent all this time like trying to like figure out how to get you know the pr for xbox up again after the whole xbox one having to come with a camera fiasco kind yeah. of thing yeah so, and and he did say like he did do the post um on the forums about hey look this year at tokyo game show that they're actually making a heavy presence on tokyo game show this year we'll which see, which I'm, I mean, they are because they're trying to market that overseas. Um, because they're seeing a big spike on sales yeah. overseas now, with, especially with the PlayStation increase. Yeah, like Japan, like is been showing just charts of the console going up. So I do see like we're going to see some games. I feel like it's going to be the same ones that you just mentioned, probably yeah. a little bit more in detail. And maybe some uh, Asian Pacific games that's just for that region alone that we may never get. Oh, really? um, they get all but I there. feel because that's yeah. that's Tokyo Game Show. They show off awesome games and we never get them. So yeah. like like let's be real here. But I feel like like yeah. how Mike said he's come in. Phil Spencer came into a trash fire, well, a dumpster fire when he became head of Xbox. Yeah. And he's been trying to clean it up as best as possible. He's doing a good so, job, but he's it's done an amazing a job. Yeah. It's just took him a while. Like I said, he, he came into a trash fire. Yeah, but and, it's been it's been quite some time though. Like you gotta think he was I think in twenty eighteen was when yeah, he was appointed. Well, or it might have been twenty seventeen when he was a no, maybe that, before it, then. No. It takes a it, long time to like, it do takes. Stuff, though. Like it's yeah, like because, you gotta think about like all like the like the bureaucracy aspect of yeah. it, you know, like all the paperwork and that takes forever to get anything done, you know, like, and I think what he needs to do is just stop dropping cinematic trailers. Cause I, yeah. I yeah. hate cinematic trailers. I want to see like, if you're going to show a cinematic trailer and then some gameplay, we're good. But if you just show like a cinematic trailer with no gameplay, like I, I don't care, man. Like, yeah. It's just like watching a movie trailer. Like one of my, like I'm just here just to see it and that's it. And yeah. then like the thing about it is too, like when you see those like on E3 and stuff like that, the cinematic trailers, you have a whole bunch of people just like screaming and clapping and like, there wasn't nothing there. There was no yeah. gameplay. There's never like, but like, oh, here's some pretty graphics. Let's do the same flashy music over and over again and put a date on the end with a question mark. Like, yeah. they might as well just put a question mark because, like, like you said, with Microsoft, like half of these games got announced two to three, maybe four years ago. I remember Starfield being announced like three years ago now. Mm -hmm. was supposed to come out this year it's getting pushed back till next year i i feel in my heart like three months before release it's getting pushed back some more like, it didn't look that good at the gameplay it, yeah, it didn't it, 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 it looked it, like it needed some time like yeah. it needed some time yeah. like redfall like what we didn't even get the cinematic trailer and some gameplay footage lately but that was about it well, we got the we got the gameplay footage at the um, the summer game fest, like the little they I forgot what they call well, it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They had thing. their they had their Xbox Live thing. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, so and they have what? a lot of gameplay for that, which it, it looked interesting. Mm, Minecraft Legends. Well, it's supposed to be like a strategy <laughs> game. So like, the funny thing about that game is they announced it at their their uh, showcase, the Xbox showcase. But the gameplay was actually at the uh, the latest Nintendo Direct, which was hilarious. Yeah, which was weird. Which well, was totally weird. So, so like, I think Nintendo I has a policy now that in order to be in the Nintendo Direct, you have to show gameplay, which I think is a good policy, right? You should have that policy yeah. that, hey, in order yeah. for you to show a game for us to market it for you, you need to have gameplay footage or else we're not showing your game. 
Um, because it, it just gets annoying, right? Like going back to the movie trailer thing, in my opinion, a cinematic trailer is like what is like hearing a movie trailer without seeing it, right? You know, you're like, yeah. okay, I want to see what the movie's about. I don't want to hear what the movie is about. I want to see it, right? And that's kind of what it is. It's like you're yeah you're you're seeing what the game is about i guess kind of but you don't really know what the gameplay is right like imagine if if um let's say gears of war 6 come out they show you some amazing like uh gameplay trailer with, like amazing graphics or not gameplay trailer but amazing uh cinematic trailer with amazing graphics and then you find out it's actually a trading card game like <laughs> could you imagine I'm that for i'm not mad about trading card games so well, i know but like Gear, gears fans would be like in an uproar like, oh what? yeah yeah, like, yeah i thought yeah, this no. was an actual like you know another gears game i think game. that happened with gears tactics dude yeah <laughs> yeah yeah like, because like this, i remember dude? i remember the cinematic trailer looking awesome <laughs> and then when they're like oh it's actually a tactical base like game just like uh xcom like you heard booze and they had to like pan to like the main stage for it <laughs> but yeah i mean it's i don't know man like i have no i have no faith in x like microsoft anymore like yeah. especially like xbox especially after windows 11 too i just hate that whole company <laughs> yeah i mean it's the xbox division is one of those things that like i, I don't know man it's it's hard like i i i kind of went into the hype right when the series x was announced and i saw phil spencer i was like yeah this guy is really trying to change everything and i still believe he is but you know it's what two years now since the console launch and i'm still not there's seeing nothing. it i can't believe it's been two years bro. yeah it's oh, like yeah. there's still oh, nothing man. i mean two years. and not to give sony a pass but like at least there's been some pretty good games right you know returnal i i just i played a little bit of that fun game um Stray. You know, I haven't played Stray yet, but yeah, they had Stray. No. Uh, you know, you have Forbidden West. Stray was out. pretty solid. Demon Souls was really fun. Uh, Sackboy's Adventure was great. It was like Super Mario 3D World, uh, and I really enjoyed Sackboy's uh, Big Adventure. Hey, Astro's Playroom, right? That was actually really fun. Uh, that was a good tech demo. Yeah, it was. It was a fun, you know, little game there. Like, so Sony has put out at least uh, a Ratchet and Clank, another one. I can't believe I forgot about that. Um, they, they put out some pretty good exclusive there, but Xbox, it's like, man, and, you know, and going back to like the services aspect of it, they market, oh, all these games are coming day one in Game Pass. That's cool. You know, and people like to argue like, you know, what's amazing about Game Pass or Xbox? Like, oh, yeah, I like Xbox because we're getting the games day one on Game Pass. That's cool if you get them day one in Game Pass. But where are the games, right? Yeah. Like, you can tell yeah. me, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get you get this day one, you get this day one, but... I'm not seeing anything that's day one yet. Like, you, I, Man, I, I, was, I had high yeah. hopes too. As soon as soon as I seen the cinematic trailer with Alan Watts like speaking in the background, you know, yeah. for the for the Xbox uh, Series X or whatever, yeah. I was hyped. And then like two years later, I'm, now I'm just kind of like, it, I have this powerful machine in my house that you know it sits it there. never gets used. Yeah, yeah, it just collects dust, Wait. man. Like. Which is the total opposite for me. Like, my PS5 collects dust. Like, I don't even touch the darn thing until, like, I have to, like, turn it on, get the games for the month, and then I turn it back off. Like, and that's kind of like. Just use the app. (laughs) Yeah. Like, (laughs) but even then, I want to make sure it feels like it's being used. Do you know what I mean? Like, but with, like, Xbox, it's. Like, this has been my first Xbox console. I didn't grow up with the Xbox in the past, and my first actual Xbox was the Xbox One X. Um, and I got that from a friend, one of our co workers, uh, for Christmas one year. He just gifted it to me and was like, Hey, you never played the Xbox. So, I think with me, I don't mind like the exclusives not showing all the time because I have a back catalog of games I've never even touched or ever played. Yeah. Like, so I'm going yeah. through those, which is fun. Like, but I could see the frustration in a lot of people where they spent, you know, 500 bucks on this console and they're not getting nothing. They're not getting, but titles that are hopefully coming to Xbox, but not being there. And I could see where the frustration lies. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 one of those uh, 
I don't know. Because I'm mainly on PC now, too, so I bought one, you know, yeah. just a game on my, like, uh, on my TV. And then I got a PS5 instead because of the exclusives. You know, like, yeah. And, yeah, like, yeah. that was basically, I consider my PS5 my Final Fantasy VII machine. And then my Xbox has been mostly the girlfriends playing it mostly now since yeah. I've transitioned more over to PC. But even then, when it was um, before I even started really getting into PC gaming, it was mostly my Xbox, just because I was playing older titles that I never played before or was always curious about and just never got around to them. So, but like, end of the day, I could understand being frustrated. Like, hey, like our competition, Sony and Nintendo like are releasing titles back to back to back to back at each month. Well, Nintendo this year, especially it's just been throwing out title after title that you see Sony with like four or five exclusives already halfway through this year. And Microsoft has nothing to say, Hey, look, this was our exclusive this year. It's yeah. only been updates of existing games that have been on, uh, Game Pass or Game Pass Ultimate for years on years, and they haven't done much. They just bought studios, and hopefully these studios here soon produce that product. Like, they bought some really, really talented studios for what? They're not using them. Yeah, it's one of those things I guess we'll... Well, wait and see. I mean, hopefully at Microsoft and Xbox have a better year next year because, you know... I just want some about gameplay. That's yeah. all I want, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I just want, you know, I, I want the competition to go up because I feel that if Microsoft doesn't try, Sony's not going to try, right? And yeah. N- Nintendo's in their corner doing their own thing, and I still think they're going to produce great games, but it's like... I want you know I want my other franchises to to go ahead. So well, we'll wait and see. I mean, hopefully Microsoft shows something off, like you know, Lost Odyssey two or something like that in Tokyo Game Show. Yeah, right. Hey, we could always yeah. wish because that game is amazing. Yeah. I love that game. Uh, but I guess we'll we'll wait and see what what happens there. Uh, before we end the show, because we are running late on time, uh, what's everyone's most anticipated game of twenty twenty three? Uh, Mike, we'll go to you real quick. 23 like yeah uh, next, next year next yeah. year oh i don't think i have one dude i don't even no? know like, oh man yeah like the most anticipated game of this year for me is like callisto protocol yeah and god of war you know but like next year like i don't i don't get hype on games anymore ever since cyberpunk man like uh-huh. i'm just like i don't really like <laughs> i see it. i'll watch I, you know I'll, I'll do some research i'll watch a few trailers and gameplay but i don't really get stoked anymore really man like so I don't even know what's coming out next year. Is there anything coming out next year? It's a lot like, of good things yeah. coming out. Yeah, like, it's the 1997 yeah. of video games, bro. Yeah, we'll, we'll see, man. Like, because they'll all get delayed. Yeah. I guarantee you 50% more get delayed, man. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jesse? What's your most anticipated game for I next have, year? I have actually two. So okay. we know one that is coming out in March is Resident Evil 4 Remake. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I told you that, like previous podcasts, that game means a lot to me. I have really high expectations for that. And there's a little little unknown game called Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, I don't know if you guys ever played Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Um, I didn't even know they made seven of those. It's uh, a um, very bad but RPG, like, but yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Wait, yeah, what? But- <laughs> they made seven? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they made seven of them apparently, crazy, but I, I'm, them? I'm excited to see where that goes because just that trailer alone, when you're watching Cloud and Sephiroth walk together and actually talk and communicate with each other, like gave me chills, like from yeah. back when I was a kid seeing those scenes. So those are going to be like my top two that hopefully don't get delayed, but we know from what uh capcom said in march resident evil 4 is coming out um but it's just a little worrying because there hasn't been any gameplay footage just trailers tokyo game show yeah we got tokyo game show now james what are you looking forward to uh so i'm surprised none of you guys mentioned this game uh it's actually a game i've been super super anticipating uh and it's also a final fantasy game and that is final fantasy 16 
Uh, I am super oh, excited mean, for that game. Oh, you, yeah, oh, you mean Devil? Oh, you, they they no. said it's pretty much ready. They said it nah, is pretty dude, much that ready. Not ready. That's yeah, Devil May Cry 7, first off. No, um, Yoshi P uh, said that it was pretty uh, much ready. That they already I mean, finished the Yoshi, developer fa- phase. They're just doing like that, tightening it up. So it's supposed I mean, to come Yoshi out, P I believe also, they said summer of next year. I yeah, it's said. supposed to be summer. You, you know what we should do? We should start like a Deadpool for all these games. And then, yeah, like, and yeah. then, like, see, like, see who's right. Like, oh, <laughs> like I said, dude, it, you know, you know what yeah. game I forgot too that I was like really looking forward to too, and they yeah. announced it and nothing else was uh, Metal Slug Tactics. Yeah, that got delayed oh, till next year too. Yeah. yeah, like, all right, so I have three. It's so yeah. three. Like, well, for me, it's Final Fantasy 16. Like I said, I I believe in Yoshi P. He's pretty. He has a good track record. I mean, he single well not single handedly, right? He has a team, but he fixed Final Fantasy 14 to what it is today. And you know, he's always straightforward with everybody when he when he's doing something. He's pretty accurate. So I can I'll see that. I I believe it's gonna come out in the summer. Um, and I'm excited for it. It's just a new take. It's a new medieval like Final Fantasy. Uh, so yeah, let's let's see what they have to offer there. But that's probably yeah. my most anticipated game. But I'm also very excited for Resident Evil 4 as well. Hopefully they don't mess that up like they did Resident Evil 3. Even though it was a great remake or a pretty remake, it's missing content, and I don't want content, you know, <laughs> taken yeah. away from my games. Right? If you do a remake, do the whole remake. Don't take away. Uh, stuff from the original game because then it, that's not cool you know that's not a remake just feel that's lazy, a, man. No. yeah no they, they gotta stop that but that is all the time what? we have for today's podcast oh you have one more thing to say mike oh no i was gonna say like um what other games are coming out next year oh uh, there's a list bro so off the top of my head yeah we have like resident evil 4 oh, uh, i have Final a whole 16, list pulled up Final Fantasy 7 rebirth uh there's dead space remake you uh, have okay. Jedi. I think they said next year was the Jedi. Yeah, yeah, Jedi, Jedi Survivor. Something. Yeah, Jedi yeah, Survivor. Yeah. yeah. Um. You also have uh Texas Chainsaw Massacre fi- or Street Fighter Six, Super Bomberman yeah. R two, uh Starfield, Metroid Prime um, Four, Stalker Two, yeah, right Robocop. <laughs> Watch it. They're gonna uh, they're gonna shadow drop Metro Prime yeah. Four. They're just gonna like yeah. Put it on the you got the, you got yeah. apparently Marvel Spider Man Two is I supposed to I come out. Uh, Breath of the Wild and the Mega Man <laughs> Mega Man Breath Battle. No, that's oh, not coming go. out. That's yeah. not coming out this year. I forgot that's about next year. That. That's that. never coming out. They're just yeah, gonna keep bro. on saying that name for ten years, dude. <laughs> So you're we're <laughs> looking at this year being a heavy year next year. Yeah, like cool. you're, I'm looking at a list and there's about like 50 or 60 different games that may or may not get yeah. delayed and we'll see and there's probably more to be announced at uh tokyo game show which is yeah. uh, we'll stay tuned for that because i'm sure we're gonna do special coverage uh for sure we might you know do a surprise episode you never know you might catch us yeah doing a live stream right after some big announcement so well <laughs> well you know you know tokyo game show starts like late for us like at midnight right yeah that's true by the time we're waking up we're seeing that and i'll be texting you yeah, guys like so, hey, hurry up <laughs> hey here's yeah. a go let's do this let's get in like i told you i wake up pretty early in the morning so by the time all those announcements are ending i'm waking up and we'll you know we'll be able to do that <laughs> yeah but definitely that is all the time we have for today's podcast i really appreciate everyone joining don't forget to like and subscribe like i said all those likes and all those subscribes really help us out it pushes us forward to get better uh do better and you know it just we get excited we get hyped for the next podcast and for the next things we have going on don't forget we do have some solo content that's also going to be released i'm trying to myself to do one every week so hopefully i'll have one by wednesday or thursday uh mike and jesse are still working on theirs and they'll have theirs so we can have a lot more content for you to kind of digest yeah you know and we appreciate all the time you give us all those viewing hours everything we do really appreciate all of that don't forget to also catch us on twitch just search up the random encounter podcast where we will do some live streaming the live stream will also be available in youtube gaming as well on our channel so keep in mind for or keep that yeah, <laughs> keep a watch for that we will have it uh tuesday through friday is going to be our streaming hour so we'll also be available there to catch us live um but yeah thanks everyone visit our patreon all that other good stuff my name is james that is jesse that is mike peace and we'll see you in the next episode of the random encounter Thank you.